I'm here. Have I ever told you how much I love you? Well, not in the last ten minutes. Yes, you have, Michael. And I love you, too. Good morning, Michael. Emily. All ready for the big day? I've been ready for this day for 17 years. <laughs> Good. The nurse is going to give you another shot. Make you sleepier. Emily? Everything's going to be just fine. I feel like a nine-year-old kid on Christmas Eve. So do I. I'll be waiting. He won't be back in his room until at least four o'clock. And don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. I know. It's just... Well, he's never seen me before. Do you know what I mean, Dr. Parker? <laughs> he's always talking about how beautiful I am. But he only sees what he wants to see. What am I talking about? He can't even see it all. I think he sees what's important. off. Guess you're pretty excited, huh, Mrs. Ross? Of course. Where's Anne? Taking a nap. I told her a story and she went right to sleep. That's good. I'll probably need you this afternoon around 3.30. Okay, that'll be fine. I think this whole thing is so exciting, don't you? Of course you do. Of course I do.
thought you were going out. Oh, I decided to stay home. How was the movie? Oh, nice. I've seen it three times. You know, it's so romantic, especially when Joseph Cotton... Larry's taking me to see Kitty Foyle tomorrow night. You want to come along? No, thanks. Well, I could ask him to bring along a friend. One of the guys he works with. <laughs> Everything would be fine until he saw me. Oh, Emily. <laughs> You exaggerate too much. Really, it'd be fun. No, thanks. I don't think so. Okay. It's your life. It's so nice to have you home with us for an evening again, Emily. Yeah, I am. Seems we hardly see you these days. Mom, could you pass the potatoes, please? I'm really in a rush. I gotta pick up Susan in ten minutes. Susan, I thought you were going with Gloria... What's her name? Oh, that was last night, Pop. A guy's gotta have a little variety, you know. We had a letter from Betty today, and they're so excited they're moving to a larger place. She sent a picture of the baby. Does our hearts proud to see that girl so happy? Well, gotta go. I hate to run him, but time's a wasting. This is the American Sports Parade. I'm sorry. Here, here. Let me get it. No, it's all right. I hope it's ah, not broken. Here, I've got it. Here it is. I hope it's not broken or anything. I'm usually so clumsy about these things. Uh, uh, what I mean to say is, I, I'm just clumsy. Hey, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Hey. Thanks for picking it up. <gasps> Thank you. Excuse me. This week's highlights of sports. The Dodgers amaze the Brooklyn fans this week with the 5-1 shutouts. Morning, girls. Would you mind telling Mr. Anderson that Jack Croft from St. Louis is here to see him? It'll be a few minutes. Mr. Anderson is in a meeting right now. Oh, that's all right. I, I don't mind waiting. As a matter of fact, I don't mind waiting at all. What's your name? Liddy McDonald. Oh, McDonald? Oh, I knew a McDonald once. They had a farm. First name was Old. <laughs> you know, uh, this can be a mighty lonely big city for a poor little country boy like myself. You know, Harry James is the palms. Well, you do know who Harry James is, don't you? I don't give up that easy. I don't give up at all. Forget it. And how about you, pretty lady? Would you like to spend the night on the town with Uncle Jack Brock? Sorry. Excuse Time. It's 
quarter past one. Thank you. Uh, excuse me again. I hate to bother you, but your voice sounds very familiar to me. It does? Oh, I remember. The other night at the movies. You bumped into me. I'm sorry. That's all right. I didn't see you coming. It's just that you don't very often see... A blind person at the movies, yes. I go to the movies all the time. Love stories are my favorite. Especially when the music is good. Love stories are my favorite, too. I'm Michael Rose. Emily Webster. Nice to know you, Emily. The school where I teach music isn't far from here. You teach music? Mm-hmm. Cello. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, how... I mean, how do you... I know what you mean. My students think that they can get away with murder just because I can't see. They forget that I can hear better than most people. <laughs> Take voices, for instance. I can hear all sorts of things in a person's voice. Like yours. Mine? Mm. I'd say uh, you're in your late 20s, uh, early 30s. Gentle, reserved, a little bit shy. Mm. Am I right? You can hear all that? All that. Been blind? Mm -hmm. No. Only since I was 13. I was working on an engine and the gasoline tank blew up on me. My eyes are still good, but with two scarred corneas, about all I can tell is when it's day and when it's night. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be. When you're blind, you learn to see things differently. Like beauty. Since I can't see, I have to find it in other ways, like through my music or being with people that are kind and uh, gentle. It was getting so late. Mm. Neither did I. I've enjoyed talking with you, Emily Webster. Let's do it again. Hmm? Soon. <laughs>
this is Dr. Parker. Could you and Michael arrange to come and see me in my office sometime soon? Of course. Is there anything the matter? Nothing wrong. I just want to talk to you about something that I think you and Michael will be very interested in. Please remember that this is a relatively new surgical procedure. Judging from your scar tissues and the dangers of infection, I feel I should warn you that the risk involved here could be great. Dr. Hoffman is one of the leading experts in the country in this procedure. So I think you can both find a great deal of comfort in that. We're proud that you are the first patient to have this surgery done at this hospital. You've been given a great opportunity, Michael. Not every blind person gets a chance to see the beauties of this world. Mommy, Mommy, wake up. Oh. Hello, sweetheart. I must have fallen asleep. <laughs> Can Daddy see? Oh. oh, we don't know yet, but he's had his operation. Is it going to come home? Of course, but not for a while yet. <laughs> Dolan can talk about his daddy and his new eyes and when is daddy coming home? That's all I can think about. I feel like these sandbags are permanently attached. Dr. Hoffman says that everything's still okay for tomorrow. And he keeps cautioning me not to expect too much. But he can't guarantee the results. But I know everything will be fine. I know it will be too. I can't wait. Tomorrow I'll be able to see you and Ann and the whole world. Emily? Yes? I want to see you. For anything else. Why the tears? What is it? I'm just happy. You know they're going to take off Daddy's bandages this morning. Good. Can we go see him? Well, maybe you can go this afternoon. We don't want to excite him too much. Mommy, you look pretty. I hope Daddy thinks so. <laughs> We're going to close the curtains, Michael, because at first your eyes are going to be very, very sensitive to light. Emily? I'm here. I'm right here. Will he be able to see right away? It usually takes a little while to adjust. We're going to take your bandages off now. I want you to just relax and don't open your eyes until I tell you to.
wash your eyes now. You may have difficulty opening your eyes at first. You have a little spasm of the eyelids. Just try to relax, and I'll help you. All right? Let's try the left. All right, Michael, I want you to open your eyes yourself. Everything's kind of fuzzy. That's to be expected. Let me take a look. I want you to look around the room and tell me what you see. Very slowly now. Let me look at it. 